welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiersma, also known as EJ. So yes, today I'm going to talk about my Dendrobium phenoliopsis. It's been a while because it's uh, at least uh, for a few months, maybe up to a year ago, I did get a request on how I uh, take care of them. Uh, so I'm so sorry that you had to uh, wait so long, but I wanted to have a few in bloom. It's just nicer to film. So I hope you're still here, <laughs> and I hope your uh, Dendrobium phenoliopsis is doing a little bit better, because you ordered them in winter, and uh, or it, and, uh, it did uh, lose the leaves, probably because of the cold. So yeah, that's the first thing. They really, really hate cold. So if you want to buy them and you need to get them via the mail, I would suggest to wait until spring, summer, maybe on a warmer autumn days, but not in winter. They really hate it. And especially uh, when they are a little bit stressed in shipping. Yeah, it can cause uh, the leaves to fall off and uh, yeah, really that cold damage, what you don't want. But even with heat packs, I'm not completely sure if that is enough. So uh, most of these guys I did find in a uh, in a grocery store actually or a garden center something like that. So I can uh, pick them up and bring them home uh, with my car or in the car. But uh, some are via uh, mail as well. These two guys and one in the back I believe. And I had the same problem. They, it it takes longer for them to uh, take off. I know these are technically no, then not the dendrobium family opposite, but they are similar and they grow similar. But uh, yeah, they really hate the cold. So that brings me to the first point, and we will have uh, them uh, in bloom. I will discuss uh, uh, with you guys or share with you guys which ones I have. But first, a little bit of care guidance. Uh, like I said, they really hold, uh, don't like colds. They really hate it, I can say. So what happens here is they overall do fine, but they can do better. And I'm really onto it this year. What happens is in winter, my uh, greenhouse, the surround temperature is around our surrounding temperature is around 18 degrees, which I believe is something around 60, 64 Fahrenheit. I will look it up, but uh, that's 18. But because I grow them in self-watering setup, they have a reservoir, and the water will get colder. So sometimes, uh, most of the times, it's 16, 15 degrees, but sometimes even a little bit lower, and then it's 14. And these really hate it. So my a struggle with these guys is keeping the roots nice and healthy in the pots. So, um, yeah, that's my first tip. Don't let them get too cold. If you have the ability, you might want to grow them on heat mats, especially in winter. Keep the temperature up, and ideally I would keep it uh, uh, a little bit higher even than I have in winter. Um, so let's say 20 degrees Celsius, if you have the ability. They really like that uh, that even better than the 18. But I cannot get it uh, that warm inside of my greenhouse. So, um, yeah, they really hate it. So my solution to that, or at least I hope it is a solution, is first of all using net pots. I'm not going to take it out this one. I will have um, a example in a minute. But net pots. And um, let's go to um, down to this one. Or these two. These a little bit more open pots, and I burn some holes in the outside of the pot, like this. So there's more air coming in. And as you can see, I just recently repotted some roots, didn't make it. But here we have fresh new roots, luckily. But more air, because air doesn't get as cold as the water. So, and that's hopefully my plan. This one is uh, making a beautiful new root system, as does this one. So, so far, so good. I can root them in spring and summer and autumn, but winter is uh, not going very well. So, more air and less water. I will keep uh, a reservoir, but just a little bit. And, to, and, that's, that's, and then I need to see how to, uh, if that works. But, um, like here, in that pot on this one. This one came also with some cold, so you can see then they lose the leaves a little bit too early on the canes. Eventually they drop the leaves, but they should hold on to them for a few years. This is blooming, we have some leaves here and some here. This is a very new one, fairly new one. It's about to spike. Oh, I'm sorry, there was a leaf <laughs> in a way. But you see, 
some good roots, but I'm losing roots too much. So I'm working with uh, on that. And that one as well. It's making new roots, so it's, it should be fine. But yet still, too much uh, root loss in winter for mine. So that's the first tip. And second of all, these, you probably know it by now, but this is southwest facing, so I have quite a lot of sun, if we do get sun, <laughs> in between the rain. Um, but And they love it. I have even some lamps, some LED uh, bulbs, I should say, above them, just a cool white. Um, and that is, uh, like I said, because they really enjoy the light, and on the dull days, I, uh, I like to have some extra light around them. And yeah, this summer it was crazy so far. We have a lot of rain and uh, thereby not as much light. So we have some sun, but it's just in bits and pieces. Not beautiful sunny days uh, on, on uh, one end, but uh, in between the, the rain we do get some sun. So yeah, that's, uh, that's why I keep the lamps burning during the day as well. And they really enjoy it, and if they have the the warmth, they really like it uh, somewhere between 25 up to even 30 during the day. If they get uh, fairly the heat and the light, they can make these very long spikes. So as you can see, this is my hand, this one is really, this is the biggest spike so far I did get on this one. Chocolata banana. And here's another spike. It's not as big, but yet still a nice, beautiful spike on it. This purple one has been in bloom for months, and it's now starting to drop the blooms. But they can bloom for months on end. And it differs a little bit between the this one as well. This one blooms a very long time. If you would look up my videos for last year, you constantly see this one in the blooming updates. And it's a beauty. I think, do I have a name for it? I'm not completely sure. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, fell. Then Robbie Van Lapsus Candy. I think that is this one. So it's a commercial name, but. And this always reminds me um, to uh, the glow in the dark. It's so bright. I'm not completely sure if it shows up on camera, but. Yeah, I have, every time I see this, uh, I have a feeling that if I turn out the lights, this, this will uh, lighten up. It doesn't, obviously, but it's so bright, it's so beautiful, absolutely stunning. Yeah, I really enjoy this as well, I enjoy all of them. I really like the structures, the canes, and the spikes. They can be fairly long. This one is even longer, as you probably can see. This is it, this is the spike all the way there. And this is the blue happiness. It's a bit, quite some purple now, but it's, uh, it is the blue happiness. It depends on the light. If you give it more light, I have the feeling that it does show up a little bit more uh, purpley. And the one we just saw, the purple one, this is the purple happiness. That is that one. But you can see very long spikes, and this is what you get when you uh, when they obviously have uh, they enjoy their life, <laughs> and you give them the light. So again, you probably know it. I'm not the person that gives them a huge amount of feet. I don't think they need it because because you can see they still make these beautiful long spikes. You need the temperature and and a bit of feet every single time, and that should do it. And obviously a root system to go with it. <laughs> So they cannot take the feed. Speaking of which, it's the same as last week with my Miltonia faces Miltoniopsis uh, Arcade video request. And uh, these get the same. So it's up to 30, uh, from 30 up to 50 parts per million in winter. And in summer, it's from 50 up to 100, somewhere in between. So it's exactly the same as uh, Miltonias and Miltoniopsis. And yet, you can see they do perfectly fine on it. So they like feet, again, but just small pieces every single time, or small bits. Small amounts, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you saw it probably in the back, but look at that spike there then. How long it is, and big, and vigorous. And we have one bloom on it, so I can show it, but I need to zoom in. And that spike did get attacked. I think with uh, thrips, so it did stop growing, but this is the bloom. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. 
if I really, really had to choose, I think this is my most favorite one. <laughs> I love the yellow, yellow and white. And next to it, that's a smaller spike, but we have a fairly long spike over here as well. Look at this. This is the best spike so far in this one. I did put it in a net pot. It took a year. Last year it didn't do so well. But this is the Anna Green Splash. I lost my Anna Green. That has a purple lip exactly like this one and it's completely green on the sepals and petals. But this one has the splashes of purples. So that's why it's called Anna Green Splash. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I keep saying it, I know. <laughs> But yeah, a very long spike. So the spike says obviously something about the condition of your plants. The bigger and longer spikes with the more blooms and buds, the better your orchid is doing. It is as simple as that. So yeah, I know if uh, orchids aren't doing so well, they still can try to put up a spike and try to bloom, but you will see it. Probably the blooms are a bit smaller. Uh, the spikes are not, not as long, most of the times you have uh, quite some buds that falling off, etc. So it's, it really tells something about the health of your plant. And yeah, I know these guys are technically no Phenoliopsis, Dendrobium Phenoliopsis, but yet still I like them so much. Look at that. Beautiful, right? So I have some younger plants over here, we just had a quick look at them. Some, some, uh, well, not there, these ones. And some that didn't do so well. And this one, this is the first time I had happened, uh, this happened, is making a cakey. They do not do that very often, if you ask me, but sometimes they do. But as far as I can see on most of them, I do get new roots because that was the problem last winter. So next year, maybe spring, summer, I uh, hope I can remember this video and we can talk about the roots. If I still have roots uh, on these plants after the winter. So yeah, I'm always working on these things just to get it better. And that's uh, that's that's uh, how it goes. And especially, uh, of course, if things are going fairly bad and that is what's happening, you may not think or not see it right now because I have so many beautiful uh, bloom spikes. But yeah, I'm, I'm really telling you guys, in winter they are not liking it here. Yet. Yet. <laughs> but yeah, I like to look at that as puzzles. It's for me, It's uh, my job is to get it better. To First, of course, to know what is going wrong and how I uh, can can deal with it, what, what might be the problem. So yeah, well, like uh, we discussed earlier in uh, previous videos, it's most 9 out of 10 times there's something wrong in a pot because we need those beautiful roots. And if they die off, yes, of course, what can we expect? Not a healthy plant, so that's why some canes are thinner, some do not have as much leaves on them. Can be because if they're older, but in my case, I should have a few more. I'm just being honest here. And I don't mind, and not, not everything goes well. There was a snail on this. Can you see that or a slug? I have that problem as well sometimes. <laughs> now it seems to be fine. These opened uh, very nice. But yeah, there's always, uh, like I said, pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> and this is in a bigger net pot. And I have always these weeds in there. But anyhow, I hope you can see it. The roots really enjoy it. There we go, look at that. So we have a high humidity, a lot of water, but also way more air than I had. And they really enjoy the air in there as well. So, and this is the polar fire, if I'm correct. That is this one with uh, three, four spikes. We have another spike up here, an older spike. Another one open there in the back and a one over here. You can see this is also damaged. Quite some blooms, it's beautiful. This one is uh, about to open up over there. So what also can happen is that these can grow very, very large. This one, uh, I think this is the came from last year and the year before. That one is even bigger. I hope you can see it. It had a beautiful spike. Last year or the year before, even way bigger. But this one is also damaged, probably thrips. This is the spring eclipse. Also a very nice bloom. 
There's another spike here on an older cane. Looks better. But yeah, they can grow large. So yeah, keep that in mind if you start growing them. <laughs> if they really like it, they will get beautiful large canes. Not all of them, but quite a few. And let's see. This for me is a sign. I hope you can see it. We have a new growth on the left here and one here that's a little bit bigger as you can see but yet a, a new growth but look at the base is this one this is my finger it's huge so this might be one that is going to be fairly big as well this is the coconut dream i'm not sure if you can read the text or so the white one beautiful but the spring eclipse is on the floor because it uh, did reach the ceiling, <laughs> so I, I have a bit of a problem. I like uh, large plants, as you probably know, but I hope they not all get that big. <laughs> on the other hand, I'm a little bit lying because I like the challenge to get them to create some room, but this is large, you guys. This is the normal size we just saw, and this is... Uh, not normal, that is uh, how you find them in the stores. Let's put it like that. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I really like having col a collection of different genera because as you can see, once they start to bloom, most of them uh, around the same time, I have yet a few to, uh, to come in bloom, but you can see it looks so amazing. All of those blooms so yeah that's why I like to uh, like my collection so much I should say because of the colors different shapes this is a little bit of more of a star shape as you can see long spikes and the colors all together is so beautiful so what I do these grow uh, it looks like they are growing in in towards into the greenhouse which is not technically through true because they uh, like to grow towards the light and that is why and maybe you already knew it but that's why these are on the floor i'm waiting for those spikes to open up the blooms and if it have if it's halfway opening up the blooms or even a little bit further i put them back and then i'm turning them around so we get this nice uh, shaped uh, flower spikes that that look like they grow inside but this is darker and they always look for the light the roots grow the other way, but the spikes and the new canes will grow towards the light. So keep that in mind, but that is how I do it. This, these just were on the floor and then I put them back and then it looks beautiful. But yeah, that's also a battle because otherwise they will reach uh, the lights, LED lights or the, the, the wall, the plastic there, like this one. I just turn it around. It's just not touching the plastic there, the wrapping paper, but it's close it's close so it might be uh i might need to put it on the floor but i, I try to keep it there because this is uh i just don't have much room anymore because of my miltonias over here <laughs> so i like to have them in um, onto the shelves so that makes the life a little bit easier while watering and running after running uh, around walking around <laughs> and looking at blooms etc so yes, and for those who don't know, I grow them in uh, pumice. This one um, has some aquarium grit on there. I was testing that out back in the days in some LECA. But now, if you're longer on my channel, <laughs> you already know, but I nowadays use my pumice. And most of the times the bigger pumice, do I have, yeah, you can see, this is the bigger pumice. The darker ones are the pebbles. I like uh, black, as you probably can see. So I like these uh, gray black pebbles on top. I think it looks very nice and um but yeah the pumice the bigger pumice they really enjoy it. this is not a dendrobium but you can see the bigger pumice there <laughs> so yeah that is uh, what i'm kind of working with overall they do fine but i can do better i want to like to to keep the roots on them so that's a challenge personally that i have and this is uh, just my care guide. This is just how I grow them. So I, ha I hope I could help you out a little bit. Please let me know. And um, yeah, I really enjoy these types of uh, requests. So we can do more updates. I, I have a Thailand black as well. 
uh, the coconut dream the white one I have over there the Thailand black is more of a dark red and I have a creamy one about to, uh, to bloom it's dropping one bud but the rest will be fine as it seems <laughs> so yeah we have different colors uh, to come into bloom and of course you can ask me any question you want so uh, if you have some questions maybe I did forget something or I wasn't completely clear on the subject <laughs> Please let me know in the comment section below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you uh, to see you on uh, one of my next uh, videos. <laughs> bye bye.